Thank you, Mary. Um, okay, uh, we're gonna get this party started. At 602, we'll call this to order. Molly, you wanna do roll call or acknowledge me here or not here? Yes, um, Chair Chastain. Right here. Vice Chair Stephen. Commissioner Donnan. Commissioner Nelson. Here. And Rebecca Casey and Kirk Monfort are not present. Thank you. On to our consent agenda, um, which includes approval of the minutes. Do I have any motions? So moved. Thank you. A second. Second. Thank you, Mike. Any discussion? Okay. Anybody opposed? Excellent. Consent agenda passes. Um, Item number three, the main event for this evening, uh, status update regarding implementation of city's waste franchise agreement. Uh, Linda, are you gonna start us off or are we gonna start with one of our other guests? No, I'd be happy to start off. Um, I will just introduce everybody uh, right now. So um, we have on, on board here with, we have Becky Holden with Recology, and then we have two people that I'm not sure, um, we, uh, you know, or have met yet, but we have Joe, could, I can never say your last name, Joe Catalago, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And then we have brand new, we have um, Christian Garcia, also with Waste Management. He was hired as the recycling coordinator. And and I, you know, if you want, they can tell themselves a little bit about themselves right now, if you'd like, or we could just go plow along if you'd like. So however you want to do that. So, um, but, so I'm not sure what um, exactly, we weren't really sure what exactly you guys wanted. So we'll just kind of wing it if that's okay, but feel free. So it's gonna be pretty informal and just kind of just, I think before when we came before you, it was right when the franchise was like the first year, I think. And we were kind of looking at, have they met all the requirements of the franchise? I think, uh, did they, you know, turn in their sustainability report? Did they do the quarterly reports? And I can uh, um, say and report again that yes, they have kept up that, they have pr provided the reporting that we required the, uh, in the timely manner that they need to. So they're in compliance as far as that goes. And as you know, that we are all working on trying to um, meet the requirements of the new regulations that are coming out. I know you guys wanna talk a little bit about 1383. So, but we, we're right now, Cal Recycles, um, intent is that they want everybody to be in compliance with the already existing laws and that's the mandatory commercial recycling then that's the 341 MCR 30, 341 and then also the, the organics recycling of 1826 so their goal statewide um, they realize that there's a lot of people that have with 1383 coming in in January 2020 um, Two, they want everybody in compliance with at least those, so that would set the, the stage for coming in and on board and, and trying to be in compliance with 1383. And I'm sorry, I'm talking about all these numbers, but <laughs> but that's um, so that's what they're really pushing hard now, and they're really asking for a lot of numbers. Um, I don't know how much you guys have discussed. I don't know if anybody attended the presentation from the council. Um, the, we had Cal Recycle come down. I have the actual um, slide presentation if you'd like to see it, but basically it, this was a different bill. And in the past what Cal Recycle has been, yeah, please you know, recycle. The state's been, yeah, recycle, but they haven't had any teeth in any of the recycling laws. This is the first one that has teeth and they have big teeth. And this is the first one that they are, we are going to be on the hook for, we're already on the hook for a lot of things. And they actually have enforcement mechanism components of this law. So it is a big change for Cal Recycle. Um, Dave, I guess has a question. Do you want me, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how your, your meetings go. So I don't wanna. Well, I, I guess my, my first question is, is how does the closing of Chico scrap metal which is the last recycle, the buyback program, uh, affect the city of Chico um, because of a, remember when you got first got hired, it was AB 2020, you and I were involved in that. How does that affect uh, the city of Chico? Well, it's not good. Um, obviously, I mean, we've lost, we lost work training center last year, last year because of COVID-19. So, and then, you know, just you, as you know, all the supermarket ones are gone and this is happening statewide. And what's going to happen is people are going to have to go to Orville or somewhere else to get their, um, 
if they're going to want to do buyback center. So I don't know how the buyback centers, if they count, like just, you know, how we have to do with disposal, you have to say, where are you from and where does that come from? So I think people are still going to recycle. It's not going to go into our trash cans. It's just, they're going to go to further to get their money. Now it's a big problem statewide. And I had a conversation with Cal Recycle. We had meeting um, our, we just did our annual report for this year. So they came up and did a site visit. And I said, what is the state going to do? Because this is a statewide issue. I mean, people are calling us and chewing us out because we, you know, but it doesn't help that scrap metal saying it's our fault that they're closing the, the, the beverage container, but they're keeping their other recycling open. But, but, you know, it's really governed by the state. And I don't know if the state has done anything to bring back and help us have the next cycle or those ones that were in every grocery store. And as you know, the bottom line is, is grocery stores are the ones that are, have to be compliant. And if you don't have any recycling next to you, they're going to have to start paying people at the, at the store. And they're, start, they're going to have to start taking those in. That's the law. There can no longer be a convenience zone if there isn't a recycling center nearby. So well, I don't know how that's all going to shake out. You know, it's uh, known that some of the stores have been able to buy their way out of it. Some of the grocery stores have been paying X amount of dollars to be non-existent. Albertsons is one of them. Uh, I don't know if that's locally or if that's just, but uh, I, I checked with them and some stores are able to buy their way out of having to recycle. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, sorry to interrupt, but they're, they're buying their way by paying the fines, basically. So they're being fined for not complying. So they would rather pay the fines than to have to bring recycling to the store and, and do the payout. So I, I don't know if it's, I just talked to one of our newer employees, he's from um, Europe. And, you know, he says that back there, they have these, they're like reverse, large reverse vending machines, basically, but the conveyor belts, you put your stuff on the conveyor belt, you get your little cash comes out the thing. And so it doesn't have any, you know, store employees having to be involved other than just the maintenance to make sure, you know, that area. So I don't know what's going to happen. And, and it's a, it's a problem. It's a problem. Statewide. I guess the next question would be for, to waste management and ecology is, have since it just happened is there going to be uh, I, I would assume that people are just not going to recycle put it in their cans and just put it in the garbage uh, that it's not worth you know whether it's glass or plastic uh, aluminum has always uh, been cost effective but uh, my question is 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 that going to cause more trips is it what what is waste management ecology going to do uh, if they see those things now in the garbage and not in the recycling. Dave, I, um, I just want to take a moment to pause really quickly. So Linda introduced uh, Joe and Christian, Christian from Waste Management. I also wanted to acknowledge that Becky Holden is here representing Recology. Oh, um, I'm just, sorry. I did. I did yeah, that's okay. Yeah. No, I did. <laughs> I did. You just didn't hear me, I guess. I oh, did. sorry. She was okay. the first one I introduced, right, Becky? Okay. Sorry. It's okay. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. So that was... Okay. So that was going to be um, my question as well, and um, I'm going to rephrase that just a little bit. So asking directly waste management and recology, do you have any plans or, or is it in any of your planning horizons to provide any buyback center services within the city of Chico? And then to Linda, is there the potential to amend the franchise agreement to make that part of the franchise agreement uh, requirements? So I'll let them answer first, um, and then I'll answer the second. So, sure, I can I can go first. Um, so we've been I know there's another group that's been talking about this and trying to find um, you know trying to find a solution. So um, we were we were asked by Sierra Nevada today about a uh, possible partnership and asking if we were willing to you know provide some kind of solution or look into it. So I did talk with our director or area director of recycling operations. Um, his name's Todd Story. He used to be with uh, Blue County. He had a couple of different ideas, and so we haven't had a chance to have an informal discussion yet about it. Um, but uh, we do want to have that discussion and see what we can do uh, lo locally and see who we can partner with and be part of the, the solution. So we're going to first have those internal discussions and see what we can do, and then um, you know branch out with a with a larger group and, and see what we can do. Do you have any like timeline estimates on these conversations or when you might yeah, be looking to implement anything? Yeah, I have it scheduled tomorrow to have the discussion. So we'll, uh, we'll let you know, the group know as soon as we have something that we can talk about. 
Yeah, I was also reached out to by Sierra Nevada's Ashley uh, Vega regarding this uh, Chico Scrap not taking CRV anymore. And I was at Thursday Night Market. It was half of the people that interacted with me were asking, what are we going to do? So, yeah, we're really looking forward to finding a solution. We're, we're definitely interested in being part of that discussion for the city of Chico. And it is statewide, so other ecologies are also looking to find a, a way to move with that. And I know that we're in discussions with Cal Recycle and discussing the bottle bill and updating it or revising it to make it work again or scrap it and do something else with our recycling. But yeah, happy to hear more about that. And we're, we're, we're definitely working on it. Yeah, the other thing too is that, um, you know, I've, it, I'm, I'm hopeful. I know me, myself, I, you know, I, I save my cans and bottles because I give them to my neighbor who does their grandchildren, you know what I mean? I'm certainly not going to throw mine in the trash and I hope that people still put them in their recycling. It's just the people who want the actual money, you know, the calls we're getting is like, well, don't you want us to recycle? Yes, we do. But we tell them you still have your opportunity at your home to recycle those materials, but that's not what they want. They want the actual money, you know, cash. So I'm hopeful, Dave, that, that they don't um, you know, put them in the trash that they put them in the recycling bin at least. But we know that there's going to be those people that are going to want to have that money um, and needs that money and use that money. Um, it's going to hurt our litter abatement, that's for sure, because that's what's being picked up along the roads is, is you know, the bottles and cans and, and things sort of thing. So I, I don't know, but we can certainly look at the franchise. I'm hoping hearing, um, you know, with Joe and, and Becky that we won't have to go that route, that they'll just do it anyway. As you know, that the whole you know, China situation with our recyclables and everything going on with, you know, the contamination levels being so low and, you know, every, it just wasn't profitable for a lot of these businesses to continue to do the CRV. And so I think it really is going to have to take some sort of change at the legislature. It, as like someone said to it, or my staff today was like, well, then why am I having to pay the fee if I can't get the money back? Well, if you can't have an infrastructure to give the money back, then you shouldn't be charging that fee. So, so I think that's going to be part of that discussion as well. But we can certainly look at the franchise. But I, you know, I it sounds like they're, they're already moving forward with their own own. Um, um, it would seem it, we can it would ahead. seem that waste management would have the easiest uh, uh, situation because uh, they already they had a buyback center there on Scott Avenue uh, that was already a buyback center uh, that could easily be started up again. Uh, to do that, Recology never really had one other than Oroville at the transfer station. Um, the China thing that is, I'm still selling waste paper to China. Uh, so uh, I think a lot of that is misinformation that the people that have been in recycling for a long time uh, find out that if the material is sorted correctly and uh, clean, they still buy it. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. It just, the cleanliness has changed. The level of cleanliness right. has changed. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree 100%. Mike, it looks like you might have a question. Uh, no, I did. I did not. But thank you. I just, I find all this very frustrating as an avid recycler. Um, we also, um, just for your guys' information, we have two people who run buyback centers out in Gridley looking to open up um, in Chico. So we're, we're, I'm working with him on that, getting him in the right zone so he doesn't have to go through the use permit process. Um, so hopefully um, that that will happen. So they, they've actually put in permits and inquired or? No, they're they're looking, um, he just came in to get the zones because okay. he, he wanted to go in a, like a commercial zone, but it required a use permit. But if he's, if he's in um, light industry manufacturing zones, um, he doesn't need to use permit, which would save him a lot of money um, and neighborhood meetings that won't go well. Yeah. Yeah, um, no, so hopefully we've that'll happen. That with basic. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you don't mind, I gotta just close my door. The, the janitor just came in. She's gonna probably turn the vacuum on. <laughs> yeah. Um, other other questions for our guests. <clears throat> okay. Well, I have some for you. They're they're not um, as specific as I wanted to be. I, 
confusingly. Um, I'm assuming that uh, you all are aware that the update to our, our climate action plan is currently out for public comment. Um, as you know, the waste sector is one of three specific emissions areas within the city of Chico that are targeted for uh, neutrality reductions. Um, have you reviewed what's been put forward in the plan within the waste management section? And do you have any comments or, or concerns, um, suggestions, thoughts on what's currently included? I hate to admit it, Sheree, I haven't had a chance to review it, so I don't have any comments, but I know that from all of the impacts from the last few years, our, our waste diversion is not where I'd like it to be. Um, having uh, people living out of the fairgrounds, it's been hard to source separate recycling, and there's been a lot of single, uh, single use plastics during the pandemic, and uh, greasy pizza boxes were just the tip of the iceberg with all the plastic bags and disposable masks and all of that. But um, whatever we can do to get to our goals in the future for City of Chico with waste reduction and, of course, keeping food out of the landfill, I'm in support. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm trying to pull it up and put it in the chat. I don't know if Joe or Christian had a comment on that. Um, is it, is that, um... I, I, I'm not sure if I saw the report or if it came through. Um, I think when I did see that, if it did, I'm thinking about the same thing. Uh, when we did look at it, we didn't have, we didn't see any issues with the actual plan or, or what, what was in it. Um, so we didn't provide comments, but um, I'd be happy to take another look at it and provide official comments, um, circling in it within our group, um, if that's helpful. Yeah, I mean, the public comment period is open until September 2nd. Is that right, Molly? And then I, I reviewed it preliminarily. I haven't seen the latest draft, but I will too. But I did um, was part of the original with with Molly and 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 there you before you. I think you're even an employee back then, right? Yeah. <laughs> when you were a civics part, right? So um, yeah. So I'll take a look at it again. But I remember being part of what those actions were and what we were going to put in the plan. So, but I'll take a look at it again. So um, it's been a while. Yeah, so I put the link in the chat and the, the page numbers that I'm referencing in that comment in the chat are not the PD, they're the actual PDF page numbers, not the page number within the document. Um, but, you know, the gist of it is essentially at 3 to SB 1383. Um, and so on page 56 of the PDF, it kind of outlines like follow 1383, implement that. And then there are some more deeper. Um, more specific measures uh, regarding waste that are called out on page 84 of the PDF. Um, again, most of them are around meeting the 1383 targets and requirements. Um, but you know, we're calling on you, our waste haulage service providers, to essentially put in a lot of work on this. Um, increasing collection capacity for things like organics, you know, a lot of public education, a lot of outreach. Um, do you have anything currently in the planning stages or actual implementation phase with regard to meeting 1383 requirements that we should know about? Um, I yeah. Oh, good. We have been looking forward to the finalization of all of the regulations, but we know that it's coming. So we're working on, um, we, we currently have the organics food waste route for Chico. So we're working on um, just anticipating expanding that quite a bit, knowing that more and more businesses are gonna get signed up for food waste recycling. Um, I've got targeted phone calls. Uh, we have a brochure that is being mailed out kind of in batches every month saying, hey, uh, we're here to help. We can come in, do a staff presentation, uh, show you how to lower your lower your costs and and uh, increase your organics diversion, and talk about the why that it's part of the city of Chico's plan, but it's also for the keeping the landfill from closing and keeping food waste from turning into methane when it could be turned into something more productive. Um, and just to say that we've got Recology has a uh, Ostrom. Roads organics facility online, and they're they're turning food waste and yard waste into compost, which is um, dialed in and working out really well. So we have that capacity 
and we're ready to start you know sending more and more there but yeah we plan on doing years of i'm i'm ready to do it we have about a thousand commercial customers in chico and they're on my list Um, so I can, I can jump in for so for waste management um, statewide. Waste management has been uh, deeply involved with the SB 1383 from when it first started and came out and working with Calgary Cycle and all of our jurisdictions. So um, waste management does have a, um, a checklist, if you will, of all the steps and all the requirements uh, that require the haulers and of the jurisdic jurisdiction. As we all know, there's a lot of requirements in there. There's um, requirements that are specifically for the haulers. There are a lot of decisions that have to be made between the jurisdiction and the haulers of who's going to um, delegate what responsibility. So, you know, whether it's contamination monitoring or the reporting or, um, you know, the capacity planning or, you know, where it's going to go, the route planning, all of it, there's, a, there's a, about 17 different categories that all have their own different decisions that have to be made um, and, you know, synchronized with, with ecology and the, your region, really. So we have a checklist. We just, you know, hopefully we get an order, an ordinance in Chico for this, uh, so that we, so we continue to have the teeth behind it. Because right now there is not an ordinance. Um, it's it's difficult to send out outreach. Um, we send out mailers. We send out. We, you know, Christian's been making a lot of phone calls to, to businesses, and we get the pushback of like, well, you know, come come, you know, I'll, I'll do it when I have to, type of thing, and. We, it's hard when we don't have the ordinance or we can't officially put, you know, the city of Chico's logo on a joint letter to say this is a partnership between the city and the waste hauler, but this is state legislation um, to help educate those customers that it's not just a hauler program, it's not just a city of Chico program, but this is state legislation and, and they're taking it seriously. So um, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, I think, with, um, you know, working together on this. Sorry to sorry to cut you off there, but can you can you talk a little bit more about what exactly is preventing like City of Chico logo being on these types of communications? Well, I don't think there's anything preventing it. I think um, you know Linda could probably speak to a little bit more about the Cal Recycle finally was able to present to the City of Chico last week, um, so this council had uh, a preview and overview of it. Um, we just feel and we've been big advocates of a, a partnership approach to this um, because. When we just send out a letter from with the waste management logo on it, it looks like it's just a waste management program, and they'll say, "Well, it's not supported by the city." So, hopefully, now that the council has been able to have that um, that overview, and I don't, I can ask Linda if that's something that we can do now, or um, yeah, I mean, is that even a council level decision, or no? Is no, no, sorry. So you're asking why is it a problem? It hasn't been a problem, but we all know that when these letters go out and you have the city's letterhead on there, that if the council doesn't aware of what was going on and that it was what the consequences were, and we've had different council members, I was reluctant to send that letter out until we had that presentation with Cal Recycle and to the board to, and to the commission. Council, sorry, I have too many boards and commissions. That I, <laughs> but, but we had this presentation was supposed to be done, what, three, four months ago, I think. So it, keep, it just keeps getting pushed off because there's more important things to do. So I was really hesitant to do this without the council being aware because they're going to get the calls and they're going to, you know, get the calls just as much as, as I am, if not more. And so I wanted them to be aware that this isn't just the waste management doing something or ecology doing something to get more money or whatever. This is a state law that has teeth and we are going to get bitten if we don't do something. So um, I don't know if that was heard or not at the council meeting yet, but I just didn't want to do something without them being aware of what the consequences are. So we will be working in towards doing that because I think that's what it's going to take. And, and my tactic too, and, and quite frankly, is I, my experience in, in 30 some years of tra trash and 25 of it here, 26 of it here, when the city gets involved, people get their back up immediately. So my approach has always been when someone complains to me about something, I go to the haulers and say, hey, can you contact these customers? Can you try to figure out you know, and fix this problem before we get involved? And so that's always been my tactic of doing things. And this is another example is I wanted them to send out the information first, which they did, you know, coming from them as the educational component. When we start putting our city letterhead on it, then it starts becoming, it gets to that next level of enforcement. 
And so, you know, we're willing to do that. It's not a problem. I just needed to make sure that the council and city manager management knew that that's what we're going to have to do. And I think what, what's different in this bill in what they've done in the past is they've allowed us to, you know, enforce it the way we need to enforce it. The biggest thing that's gonna change with this new 1383 is we still do not have mandatory trash service. The county still does not have mandatory trash service. People can self haul and choose not to have any trash service in them. This new bill is gonna require them to have mandatory trash service. And that, as you know, in the discussions, even when, when we did the franchising, it was never going to discuss that we were gonna do mandatory trash. So that's gonna be a big, big, push and that's going to be a big thing for council to approve because it's always been that this county and this city has never had mandatory trash service and that's been that's what cal recycle is requiring us to do with this ordinance we have to have an ordinance passed in january by january 2022 and that ordinance not only is going to require mandatory service but it's also going to have penalties for businesses that don't comply it, that's okay, so so now that council has been made aware of this, I mean, can Recology and Waste Management use city yes, as part gonna, of their communication and outreach? Yes, yes, we're going to do that. At the presentation was just, what, a week or so ago? Week? I yeah. Think. Yeah. So yes, no, that, I just, like I said, we had tried okay. hope to do it a couple months ago, but I just didn't feel comfortable doing it without them being aware. Right. So that's a non-issue now, right? Correct. Put the city logo on there. All right. <laughs> well, I have to remind the city manager that we're going to do that, but yeah. Because <laughs> um, that's, I mean, that's the um, action number one here is develop and implement a partnered education and outreach program. That's the number one thing that's in the plan. Um, and I'm recognizing that we have some edits here as I'm re reading this live. Um, but like the, we're, we're going to need to have that partnered education and outreach program. So making sure everybody's on board with that because we're putting it forward in our climate action plan. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Um, my question is we've asked for, when we were the sustainability committee before, we used to get a report um, of what the collection had, because one of the reasons uh, for to go to the franchise was the uh, lower amount of uh, trucks going down streets that but we used to get a report from both companies uh, about what they were doing. Uh, I've asked for that in the past uh, because of COVID and some other issues. You're still getting that stuff, Linda, and can we get a copy of really what they're doing? Uh, I mean, really garbage companies are all they are is trucking companies they pick up from point a and take to point b now that they've got into recycling there's a certain amount of they're keeping out of the um the old ab 2020 about keeping away from it and obviously they don't do quite the same as when we got started in this a long time ago but it still would be nice to know uh how the levels of uh, collection have been are, are they making less trips are they making more trips as a committee, we really haven't gotten that information on the waste segment. Can we get that? Um, sure. So I and I we can talk about that a little bit. The the reports we get don't really talk about the amount of you know gas. And, and we were just talking about this um, earlier. Is that what what have have they reduced as far as the number of trucks down the street? I mean, they send me their sustainability report that, and I know that waste management's using you know natural gas um, vehicles. Um, so. But they, as far as a report that they send me and say, this is what the impact is from the number of trucks not going down the street, I don't get that report. But we can certainly try to come up with something that we can talk about. We know anecdotally it's probably it's working, but it's a little, uh, how do I say this without getting myself in trouble? But it's a little hard because what I have, how I envisioned the franchises were going to be is that we were going to have zones. And I, I thought, you know, just hypothetically 99 was a break. So the west of 99, the east of 99. So then I would know that, okay, west of 99, that was recology, you know, you know, east of 99, that was waste management. It didn't come out that way. So what happens is you still have commercial trucks going in at areas that we had hoped to only have one hauler doing those, those areas. So 
because Recology has about three quarters of the city in the zone for commercial. And then when you include multifamily in there, they're going down residential streets to pick up multifamily units. So what was originally envisioned to be this reduction of six trucks down to three is quite not there because um, you are still going to have commercial trucks going down the street and you're still going to have the multifamilies being being serviced. So I don't know how how much data that would really show, but you've got to know, and maybe like I asked him, do we have, because I kind of anticipated this question for this meeting, um, you know, do you have less gas, you know, number, because we all know the greenhouse gas emissions reductions is based on, we, we look at a easy indicators, is there less gasoline being purchased, you know, is there less miles traveled, that kind of thing. So, you know, they, I asked if, are you seeing a reduction? And I think Dan Shea before at one time had mentioned that they had did see a reduction. I just don't know that, can't remember that number, but we could probably ask them to do that. I, I'll let Joe and Becky kind of fill in on that. Joe and Becky. <laughs> I, I can go ahead. Um, so yeah, I, we don't, we don't have a report per se that we that we regularly generate to to Linda, but that's not something that's out of the question to to get. Um, waste management as a company is very focused on efficiencies. I mean, I think on every conference calls that we have, it's all about efficiencies and how to maximize the the trips that we make, um, the less so that we don't have trucks running out and you know return trips and empty trucks and all that kind of stuff. So um, I know from an operational standpoint, we're we're very focused on the most efficient trips that we make. So. Um, I can get with our district manager and see, I know they have different types of reports that they can, that they can pull that will help kind of explain what we've been doing over the past couple of years or so um, to, to work on the efficiencies in the city of Chico. So uh, that's something I'll put on my to-do list. Yeah, I think we can come up with a report of that as well with either fuel usage reduction or, or miles traveled to, to show the difference since the 2017 start date. Okay. I think um, we've talked about this as a commission, you know, um, this idea of the trucks and the fuel consumed in trucks and, you know, calling that out as, as a specific greenhouse gas reduction strategy within the waste sector. Um, and, you know, our conversations come back to the fact that that's ultimately captured in the transportation um, segment of our greenhouse gas inventory and the climate action plan. Um, so it's, it's kind of, it's a tricky one that, you know, it's certainly associated with waste and it's a result of waste, um, but it's, it's captured, quantified and measured as part of the transportation section of the inventory. Um, so if you're reading through the climate action plan, that's, that's why it doesn't appear there, but I think that's important information for us to um, think about and talk about as a commission as we work towards, you know, greenhouse gas reductions overall. Um, I yeah. want to add about Recology's fuel. We've switched to a, it's renewable diesel. It's a source from agricultural, like vegetable fats, and it's still burning diesel, but we're reducing our particulate matter. So it's 30% cleaner as far as particulates and 10% lower on the, the nitrous oxides and the NOxes. So we've, we've made that switch and we've, we've tried to do that company wide. Um, and definitely the trucks going to Chico are, are on renewable diesel so that we could add that into the report as well, just to show you. Okay, thank you. Um, any other commissioners have comments or questions for our guests? Yes, do you have anything else you'd like to share? I have one more question. But I want to take the time to introduce myself, if that's okay. So my name is Christian Garcia. I'm local to the area. I am a Chico State graduate, and I've been with the company for about two months, uh, conducting outreach to our community, multifamily dwellings, and uh, commercial businesses. And during that time, I have identified who meets the requirements or the mandates. Um, or who's in compliance and whoever's not, we have offered them our services. I had a few that have been taking recycling bins now and my biggest success story uh, is Holbrook's furniture store. Um, they used to haul uh, about, I would assume maybe eight yards of clean cardboard to the landfill. 
So now we're taking it in as a, at North Valley disposal there. So we're helping them, you know, save the time to go to the landfill and divert that from the landfill. Awesome. Are you charging them for that service? No. So you're reselling the cardboard though? I wouldn't know. That would be a question oh. for Joe. I would imagine so, yeah. It's kind of their business. Yeah, cardboard is, um, is, is a commodity, so it, it is sold to market. Hey, um, I had just one kind of last question for I don't know, maybe Linda. Um, does anybody know what our current city diversion rate is? What was that, Becky? Sorry, I have the vacuum in the background here. <laughs> she, right now, she's got the vacuum going. So, um, yeah, so we what, what I have is um, we have the, the, we just did our annual report for the cow recycle, which you know is pounds per person per day. So that's what we're using. That's what we did. The problem is this year, there was, this is the first year that they changed to the disposal reporting system, to the new system where it's um, actually facility reporting. And we did really well this year. Our pounds per person per day were only 0.8, but I know that we're not generating, we're generating way more than 16,000 tons of trash. So that's going to have to get um, fixed. So I know that they reported to us that um, about, I think it was 66,000 tons of trash this year from the haulers reporting to me through their reporting. And last year we were at 80, I had it here. 89, I think, 89,000. We know that's COVID related also, but we are seeing reduction. We did see an increase in recycling as well. It's just really hard. And so we're, what we're looking at now is compliance with the percentage of compliance with, um, it's just hard because we don't know what's being backhauled by the grocery stores. We don't know, you know, so what the, what the haulers provide is only a small picture of what we're recycling. I, it doesn't say what the city is recycling, and that's where the pounds per person per day is a better indicator because there's so much that's going on on the, on the corporate side, like grocery stores are backhauling and all that. We don't have those numbers, so it's just really hard to say what our actual percentages rate, and that's why this the states went to the pounds per person per day um, metric, but we will have better numbers as we move forward with 1383, and because um, we're going to have to have more information as far as edible food and then also what the food waste is and so it's going to just be a combination but we have met um the requirement um of the four our our goal is 6.2 i think is what the state gives us per pounds per day and we've been within the 4.2 4.4 range um for the last years that i've been doing it and I, I just don't know this year because it's way skewed. <laughs> so there's some, we think what's happened is count the count, you know, Valerie's new, not that she did anything wrong, but I think she, I, we did find that she did allocate some Chico waste to Butte County. And so we found some of that. So that's just going to have to be sh shooken out that this year is going to be an anomaly that we may not have those numbers unless we figure out where the actual discrepancy is. But okay, so we don't know. I don't can't give you no. I can okay. tell you that when we need the, the goals of what this cow recycling is given, I can't give you a percentage. I don't know. Okay. Linda, is it possible to uh, have a city ordinance uh, to be able to have those companies like CVS or Walmart that do their own internal and backhaul it from their own trucks to be able to give you those numbers? I think that's going to come out with 1383 because they're going to be the, what we call the tier one and tier two. Um, when you look at the 1383, all the, all, that's going to come out in the edible food as well. I mean, we can ask it, but that's a lot of, I mean, that's how we started out, Dave, if you remember back in 89, 89. <laughs> that's it was, why I was asking. Yeah, it was, it was recycling race base and not disposal base. And that's why they went to disposal base because it's just too hard to calculate because it gets shipped wherever. And then you, know, you double counting because you get it from that processing center. And that's why the state's going to getting actual facility disposal information, each facility, and then they figure out where it originated. So like, for instance, if it goes to uh, Recology at their transfer station, then that goes to another transfer station and then they're both reporting and then the cow recycle is saying, okay, where is the final tonnage? Are we double counting? And so 
that's why they went to that system to try to get a better idea of where the what the disposal really is because I, it's just hard to track it and trace it. Mm-hmm. But um, we can ask that question, but I'm not sure it would really help us. I think the bottom line is what's going across the scale. It, right. uh, city, I mean, we it's cradle to grave. So wherever they deposit our, our trash is going to be our trash. So whether it's in Stockton or El Lodi or wherever, right. it's still counted to us. So I still think it's a good indicator that you know, pound, if the pounds per person per day goes down, because you know growth is going to happen, as you know, with the climate action, how do you, you know, how do you count, counteract the growth that's going to occur regardless? You know, can you change that, that curve, basically, of what the business as usual was? And so it's a similar situation, is that, so that's why they came up with the pounds per person per day. And I know that was long ago, but that's Becky, you had a comment? Yes, I wanted to add on to what Linda was saying, and then I had a comment about tons. Um, the percentage recycling out of landfill was was lower because of having a lot of people I already. I already said having a lot of people throwing things into the the dumpsters at the shelters during 2019, and then during 2020, it seemed like everybody had takeout, and it was all just we had Amazon boxes in every container, just all over the place. Um, But I was gonna note that it seems like our heavy hitters are gonna be all of the construction that's going on. And I know that we have Cal Green and we're supposed to be enforcing that if you're gonna build, you're gonna um, divert as much as you can of the construction and demolition material. But a lot of the debris boxes that we're selling are just going to the landfill because that's the landfill tipping fee. So folks are saying it's only 40 to 11 per ton it pencils out better than what Recology is charging to sort it. Even though the sorting facility we're taking it to is getting a 75% diversion, drywall, concrete, lumber, cardboard, all from one bin, I'm not able to sell that as well. There's a few um, green con- contractors in Chico that say, you know, I want this to be a sustainable box. Yeah, go ahead and bill me. And then the rest are saying, I need another trash dumpster exchange tomorrow and the next day and the next day and we're just hopping like that. So I, I would like to let you know that and maybe that's something that I could get some help with um, encouraging them to go the, the way of recycling and that'll really get our tons up. Okay, thanks for that, that's helpful. Any other uh, questions from commission or comments from guests? I guess I just have uh, one more comment I just wanted to pass along. So um, I'm sure the communities in this group have heard of our uh, contamination program and the notices that have been going out and, and it's made, made a little bit of news of, you know, past few months. So what that's really geared towards is reducing the amount of contamination in the recycling stream and then also overfilled carts. So um, waste management has proprietary software in all of our trucks that, that take small videos and small pictures of every single service and every single stop. Um, and provides warning notices and an eventual uh, a step up process for, for charges for people that can habitually contaminate their recycling. Um, so it's really designed to get the, the big, all the large um, legit trash out of the recycling. Um, and I wanted to say for SB 1383 purposes, there is a contamination monitoring uh, component of that legislation. And we've already cleared this with CalRecycle that our that our system that we're doing currently in Chico, although it, we do get some complaints, uh, council members get the complaints too, um, it does satisfy SB 1383 compliance for that piece of the legislation. So we're very comfortable in saying that for SB 1383 purposes and that piece that uh, Chico would be compliant for that, for that section with, with our customers. Um, so just want to pass that on. Thank you. And I don't want to um, prolong this meeting, but I just was looking at your climate action um, plan that here and that uh, I can address each of these if you like and send that as an email. So I don't want to take up your time tonight, but some of these we, um, the one I'm just looking at the action now is that North State rendering is expand its use as its digester. They have done that. They have a depackager now, and I understand they can do, I think a hundred tons a day, I think is what I heard. Um, and, but just to let you know that that's what's being done by the county right now is 1383 is they've hired R3 consultant because that under 1383 they as a county has to has to plan for capacity just like the city does it's on us 
So they're doing a study yeah. now trying to see what's out there. Durham Wood also just recently got an expansion. So that study yeah. will be really interesting to show the capacity of what's going to be able to be recycled by on the organics waste stream. So yeah, you'll see several of the recommendations are capacity planning. So yeah. that capacity planning for organic waste collection, yeah. capacity so planning, planning for the process yeah. of capacity plans going on by the county right now. That's all I wanted to add. So. Thanks. I guess um, I got a quick I got a question for Cherie. Since you stopped uh, recycling at Chico State, have you noticed any differences in the amount of waste being generated? Uh, to be clear, we didn't stop recycling. Uh, the AS recycling program was canceled, but the collection services just moved into facilities management services. So we're still collecting recycling from campus and, and we're uh, partnered with Recology um, for those services. So okay. we're still recycling. <laughs> It'll be fun when uh, all of our students move in on Monday and school starts a week after that. Well, yeehaw. Uh, Mike, it looked like you maybe had a, a question or comment. I did. I just had a quick question actually for Linda about the sort of business recycling in the city of, of Chico and in terms of what you know requirements there are now or could be there relative to you know offices and businesses what the requirements are to actually recycle i recently changed offices and when i moved to the new office after the first week i said hey where's the recycling and they said oh we don't do recycling here we just empty the dumpster dumpster twice a week and so i've been collecting my recycling and taking it home from my office but it adds you know it adds a hassle to that process and I don't want to not do it but I'm, again I won't say where my office is but they don't do any recycling here so that, that's just a frustrating thing to me because I, I can't not recycle but it creates a barrier for me to actually keep up with doing it so. Yeah, certainly it's it's a it's the state law. That's what the the mandatory commercial recycling is all about. Um, you know, for the business, it starts that anybody who generates four cubic yards per week of trash has mm -hmm. to have recycling. So that's what Christian's going to be doing, and that's what Becky's going to be doing is helping get those businesses in compliance. Um, I think we I just did the numbers, and don't quote me on this, but it's surprising that we we were about eighty percent. We still have twenty percent to go. But mm -hmm. you might be in that 20%, but that definitely is the state law. And that's what I was saying earlier in my beginning of the presentation is Cal Recycle is really looking at us to make sure that we're meeting those two laws that have been on the books for a while. And then 1383 is going to make it even more important that everybody's in compliance because organics now includes paper, it includes carpet, it includes textile. So it's not just green waste, it's all organics. And so that yeah, that's going to kind of close that loophole of people thinking that they don't generate, but they really do. I mean, it's gonna be very few things that's not gonna be fall under the AB uh, 13. Yeah. yeah, that's what it sounded like. And that was my understanding. So I just wanted to clarify. So I would be happy to notify the owner of the building. There you go, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Um, anything else on, on this agenda item? What, Katie, you turned your camera on. Do you have a, a comment or? No comments, but we do recycle okay. here. We do recycle. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Good. It looks like Becky's put her email in the chat. Um, Joe and Christian, I invite you to do the same uh, if you'd like. So um, everybody can take that down if you do not already have their contact info. Um, if I'm not seeing any other hands or immediate comments, questions, Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, move on to our, our business from the floor. I will say, uh, actually, sorry, before we move on to the next item, uh, Joe, Linda, Christian, and Becky, thank you both. Thank you all for being here um, this evening. Thank you for the update. I appreciate it. Um, I do <laughs> encourage you because you know the waste is a, a pretty big section in our climate action plan. Um, please take a look. And if you have any comments, the public comment period does close on September 2nd. So. Um, you're going to be key partners in, in all of that. So um, hopefully you're on board with those uh, measure recommendations that have been made and um, you would support the adoption of the climate action plan. So thank you for the um, opportunity to present to you guys and, and to provide information. We appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, okay.
with that, um, I invite you to stay for the rest of our meeting, but uh, I understand if you have other things to do. Um, so we'll move on to item number four, which is business from the floor of public comment. Um, Katie, do you have anything? <laughs> yeah. Just a quick thought um, in light of what Commissioner um, Nelson said about the commercial not recycling, we would be happy on behalf of the city of Chico to put out a little reminder out to the membership about the recycling will be real easy if um if somebody linda we is linda gone she left sure. um <laughs> she left um, <laughs> <laughs> if linda would like to and we'd be happy to get something out to our membership our constant contact list is over three thousand individuals and also be a great social media um opportunity just to remind businesses that would so, be great thank you katie happy to help yeah katie that would be fantastic sure Any other, anything else, Kate? Or a question, Joe, you're also now business from the floor, anything? I don't have anything. Okay, I'll move on to item number five, reports and communications, Molly. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know that our Civic Spark fellow has left. Um, his last day was like two weeks ago. Um, so we, he made substantial strides in the SB 379 work, but it's not complete. Um, you guys will have a chance to look and review that, but I'm, we're trying to just keep you guys focused on the cap right now. Um, we're also bringing in a new Civic Spark fellow. Nicholas Hart will be starting the middle of September. He's going to pick up where Austin left off as well as work on our SB 1000, which is environmental justice element. Um, and he'll also be doing some um, climate action plan implementation. Um, so educating staff on the measures, going out in the community, um, doing education and outreach just around the climate action plan. Um, so yeah, we, we are still working on that. It'll be coming your way soon. Um, and then yeah, Nick will be here in middle of September. Excited to have him. Excellent. That's all I got. All right, thanks. Any other reports of communication from the rest of our commissioners? Um, yeah, I had one thing I wanted to share. I attended most of the uh, city of Chico, their housing element update last night. I think I saw you, you were there as well, Katie. I know Brendan Veig was. And so I was just, I don't know if there's been any outreach or coordination with some of those efforts, but there, you know, we have our homeowners and property owners sort of section in our climate action plan. There was also discussion in the housing element update about how to encourage, you know, energy efficiency and transportation oriented housing. And I just, there may be some opportunities for some synergy there between some of the work being done on the housing element and some of what we're doing with the climate action plan. And maybe that's occurring and I don't know about it, but I just you know, had that thought last night when I was, when I was attending that, that discussion. So I just wanted to bring that up. Yeah, I just, I've been working with the, um, with the consultants, keeping them updated on this process and, um, there, I think there's a whole section in the housing element about the cap and other programs we have. Um, so we're definitely in conversation with them. Okay, great. I kind of assumed and hoped that was happening, but yeah. <laughs> Always good to check. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, any other reports, communications? Okay, with that, uh, we'll go ahead and call the meeting adjourned. Um, 6.54. When is our... Next meeting, October 13th, 14th, September, September, September 9th, Thursday, September 9th, um, plan for Zoom, but we'll see what happens. Um, so thank you all for being here. Have, I, I have a one last question. Molly, oh. how's it going with uh, replacing the commissioners? <laughs> Do you have to ask? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Yeah, no, no updates. Um, no update. You could um, email your council members and encourage them to uh, stop kicking that down the road. Um, I have. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry. It's okay. Yeah, I wish, I wish I had more information. Maybe on September 9th. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it might be an eight year term. Maybe. <laughs> oh, geez, I really hope not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not, I'm not for me. For my Sheree, you've already term. been on eight at least eight years. Yeah. 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 I will be out on September 9th. 
Okay. Thank okay, you. Going on a camping trip with my family if I can find a smoke free location. Good luck to you. Yes. See how far we have to go, but I will be out that whole week. Okay. Thanks for letting us know. Um, okay. Now we'll adjourn. Uh, see you guys September 9th, hopefully. Well, not you, Mike, but hopefully everybody else. Great. Thank you.